Okay. Okay, so man in the wall wants to debate. And I'm going to go into the general and we're going to drag them in. Man in the wall, this is the information I have about man in the wall. They are a self-identified social democrat. They're only 17 years old. Alex is here. What's up, Alex? I'm going to have to mute, and I, I'm going to ask, can you mute as well and just go in the Discord general? But keep the video up, you know? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Um, all right, so we're in here. We're going to have Man in the Wall come. Man in the Wall, don't worry. I want to debate you. I know. Um, yeah, so we do accept all requests to debate us. And, uh, yeah, let's see what you've got to say. All right, man in the wall, you're up. You're in my uh, general chat, if you can hear me. I dragged you in. If you just unmute, and uh, let's get this show on the road. We're live now, right? Yes, we're live. Okay, excellent. Um, it's a pleasure to be on your channel, as... Uh, always, uh, this I appear to be the third major. I don't know if I would call myself. I guess I would call myself somewhat associated with Bread Tube that mm -hmm. you've debated after Xander Hall and Vosh. What's your, uh, maybe your YouTube not, account? Really your YouTube account is man, I I've uh, I've not, I haven't heard of Bread Tube. So Man in the Wall. You got, yeah, it's my best you, the, you got five hundred subs um, right now. Uh, 456, I believe. Oh, okay, okay. Um, in fact, you know what? Okay. Um, eh, you know what? It's a special occasion. I figured I might as well. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing, uh, um, I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty well. My, uh, uh, step family uh, just arrived, uh, or sorry, not just arrived. They're just uh, about to leave, and uh, so now I can fully focus my attention on you and this discussion, which I'm very interested in having uh, after uh, seeing some of the stuff that you've said on your stream and your discussions with Vosh and Xander Hall and that one Vosh fan. Sure. Uh, you're quite the character, it seems. Um, okay, sure. So... So I guess my my first big question for you would be the following. Um, I understand that you have um, issues with Vosh, and I have issues with Vosh as well. In fact, I've debated him on his channel. If you look at one of my videos, um, we, uh, uh, we have a, a pretty in-depth discussion. I think there's plenty of legitimate criticisms to be made of him and to be made of many other bread tubers, for that matter. But I feel like this kind of... Um, like fervent, like deep seated, uh, almost obsessive. If your video is uh, any indication, hatred for Vosh and hatred for BreadTube that I see in so much of the tanky YouTube spear is maybe a little unhealthy. Okay. Like, um, well, uh, okay, sorry. let me uh, let me allow you to you continue. Sorry, continue. My bad. Um, and uh, um, I mean, like. Excuse me. Um, I understand that we will always, on the left, we will always have our issues and we will always have our things that we don't agree on right now. But, but I mean, maybe this is just a um, personal thing because I live in the United States and I believe you live in Lebanon or do you live in the United States and you're just of Lebanese descent? The latter, yes. Oh. Um, well, in this case, we're both, uh, we're both Americans. Um, and uh, uh, right now... Uh, even with the Biden administration of full swing, uh, just even just on YouTube, I would say the far greater threat to the interests of uh, socialism, to the interests of progressivism, to the interests of, um, I guess you could say, the broader American working class is not these bread tube figures like Vosh or Philosophy Tube or ContraPoints, no matter how much we may disagree with them on certain things. It's the cavalcade of fracking billionaire funded um right-wing demagogues the likes of ben shapiro stephen crowder um tim pool dave rubin etc mm. these are the people who in my view pose the real significant threat 
uh, to the left in, as far as their emboldenment of figures like Donald Trump, who in my view is a reactionary fascist, or at least fascist leaning. Um, and uh, I think that these people pose much more of a danger. And I'll admit that I might um, help feed into this narrative myself uh, because of attacking tankies. We do need to both collectively collectively realize that as much as I might have issues with you and you might have issues with me, um, the real threat that we face is not bread tube or the tankies. It's the far right, at least here in America and probably in most of the Western world and just the world in general. Okay, uh, is that all? Yeah, that's all. Okay, well, there were a lot of things you said. I'm going to go off on the basis of what I've remembered. You are free to, um, when I'm done, uh, bring up points you think I haven't addressed. And uh, I, I, my memory is, uh, short-term memory is a little bit limited. So I'm going to try to go ahead and address what I can remember. The first thing is about my hostility towards Vosh. Well, before Infrared even existed... People who share views, uh, such as myself, who are aligned with a certain, um, I guess you can call it a sphere of the left, I think I don't think I would call it that. People like Caleb Maupin were representing us. And Caleb Maupin was an extremely respectful, sincere, and um, honest guy when he came onto Vosh's stream and he interacted with BreadTube at large. It was actually Vosh, the figureheads of BreadTube, and their supporters who set the tone of hostility between us and them with their uh, un completely unjustifiable and inexcusable disrespect, slander, and even threats, physical threats of violence they levied against Caleb Maupin. Now, what did Caleb Maupin do to deserve that? Absolutely nothing. They're the ones who set the tone as far as the hostility between us is concerned. And then there's another uh, thing, even if you neglect the thing about Caleb Maupin, the bread to people explicitly position themselves and their so-called leftism uh, on the basis of basically dick riding off of the power of the Democratic Party, Silicon Valley, the oligarchy and the elites establishment at large. And they laughed and scoffed at any leftists who weren't within this, as G George Carlin called, uh, big club, or, or only in this case, it's an ideological and discursive big club. Anyone who didn't speak like a stooge of the establishment, repeating lies and slander and um, talking points that drum up aggression uh, against countries like China and Russia, was dismissed as an idiot and someone to laugh and scoff at. Now, Xanderthal and our uh, interactor ended very pleasantly, but even he uh, initially was laughing and scoffing at uh, infrared for no other reason that we were tankies and Marxist Leninists. Vosh uh, showed the similar smugness and attitude um, toward us. But when all is said and done, even if we neglect the fact that um, it is bread tube and it is those people who set the stage for the antagonism, the idea that there needs to be something, uh, some kind of left unity, I find it to be an absurdity. The left, and moreover, what we call the radical left in the United States is an acute minority of human beings uh, living in the country. The left doesn't need to unite. That's an, that's an idealist view. People don't need to unite on the basis of their ideas. A class needs to unite on the basis of its material reality. So those leftists who are most successful in accomplishing that aim, the lion's share will go to them. That's how it happened in Russia. That's how the Bolsheviks overawed all of their rivals. The most ruthless um, hostility must be cultivated within the left. It, mu it is a war. It is a gladiator pit because we're ultimately not here to hold hands and feel good about ourselves because we share ideas. We're here to win the working class, the minds and the support of the American working class. That's why we're here. We're not here because we have ideas in, in our head that we agree upon uh, implementing in reality. We're here because we are struggling to connect to the American people and to the working class. And finally, regarding Biden's offensive that you were talking about, I find that a really interesting thing to say. While people such as myself, Caleb and many others, we're rightfully pointing out 
um, the hypocrisy of leftists who are spending their time and energy devoted to voting and camp even campaigning for Joe Biden in the general election, even after the shameless display of the Democratic Party's um, rigging of the primaries, both in 2020, as we're now uh, seeing and, and now is being revealed, and in 2016, even after all of the this, people like Vosh and people like ContraPoints and BreadTube were telling the acute minority of leftists who do exist to spend their time and energy not cultivating a new form of contact with the American people and building an independent uh, power from the Democrats, but to spend their time campaigning and even voting for Joe Biden. Now that's fine, that's all fine and well, but now you're saying since Joe Biden's off on the offensive, we have to unite with this, these people. I disagree, I think actually we need to hold people like Vosh and people like him to their record, hold them responsible for the position they took in the November general election and that whole debate that was going on. We leftists, Caleb and all of us, were right. Joe Biden was a bastard and he's not good for the left. We were the ones who called it, and now we should get the lion's share, and we are getting the lion's share of the fallout of that. And now we're not supposed to hold Vosh and his ilk uh, uh, to be responsible for the position they took then? No, that's not how it works in politics. And yes, we are going to attack fellow leftists, because when you call yourself a socialist, when you use these names, you are competing with us. And when you're using it in a radically different way, you're competing with the superficial identification of being a leftist and being a socialist. You're obscuring and obfuscating the meaning of these words because the money, the eye, the eye on the ball, so to speak, the ball is the American working class. This is who we're focusing on. So we have to attack the people who are repping our name and repping the good name of socialism and communism in a completely false and opportunistic way. We do have to attack them. Now, I can I agree on the point that we shouldn't be spending all of our time uh, attacking them. We also have to cultivate something independent and positive, and that is what Infrared is doing. But we will show no mercy toward BreadTube. We are going to be absolutely ruthless in our differentiation from BreadTube and our attack on BreadTube. We're going to expose them. We're going to show the American left who's on the rise and who's on decline. We are silent no more, and tankies are on the march go ahead okay um so a lot of things uh for one excuse me uh for one i think that well you have to consider the like where america is right now like america is not in the midst of a battle between like mls and libertarian socialists it's um it's a battle between like the moderate left and the extremely far right. Like that is the battle for the soul of America that's taking place right now. Um, and you know, like it or not, um, uh, bread tube figures, people like ContraPoints, Philosophy Tube, Vosh, etc. Whatever you may think of them, they are successful in moving at least parts of the internet uh, more towards uh, left leaning ideas. Uh, I mean, you know, ContraPoints was featured in the New York Times. Um, Vosh is a, a slowly rising figure who I imagine will get even more and more prominent as time goes on. These people change minds. Uh, and uh, when people's minds are changed, they vote in a different way. They act in a different way. Uh, they're more willing to and they're more willing to consider politicians uh, and political figures uh, who might act more in their interest, like, for example, Bernie Sanders or the squad. Um uh, like, uh, what's some other stuff? And the like, the thing is, is that um, as far as them like advocating for campaigning and voting for Biden, um, I would argue that in that case, that was uh, a necessity. You know, now, did they spend too much time advocating for that? Probably, but I do think that on a number of very serious issues facing this country, from climate change to healthcare to COVID nineteen to LGBT rights to immigration to uh taxation to god uh, to even foreign policy in a number of uh areas i would say that biden was demonstrably better than trump um in a myriad of different ways and i think that just from the consequentialist perspective we should vote for him on that issue now that doesn't mean that once he's in power we shouldn't ruthlessly criticize him for the many terrible things he will likely do of course we should and we will I imagine, or at least I will, 
well, I don't know. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe they are just cucks to the Democratic Party. But I hope that they will legitimately criticize the Democrats uh, and Biden, as I will, when they do things that I do not like. Um, and as far as Caleb Muppet acting in good faith, this is something that we are fundamentally going to disagree on because I am of the opinion that Caleb Muppet is an extremely bad faith actor and, frankly, a grifter who doesn't believe a goddamn word that he says and is largely... Uh, and largely says what he says because RT and press TV and other um, uh, state uh, uh, state sponsored media actors for repressive dictatorships give him money to say the kind of stupid bullshit that he does. So that's just my opinion. You can respond now. Okay, thank you. Um, now, regarding this issue of the threat of the far right, it seems you missed the point I was trying to raise, though, is that instead of conceiving the fundamental contradictions on ideological terms, I agree the primary contradiction isn't between MLs and other leftists or between leftists, but it's also ridiculous to say the primary contradiction is even between leftists and rightists. This is an ideological view and not a materialistic and class-based view. The far right... Uh, encompasses a lot of things. It also encompasses masses who are willing to follow leaders, uh, professing to be populistic anti-establishment forces. I don't see what is so essential about the rightist ideology. I don't see ideology as the essence. I see material reality and class relations uh, as the essence. If working masses are following right-wing leaders... Can I respond to that? No, you can't because or it's my you- turn. Why can you? Can, I didn't interrupt okay. you once. You understand? It's my hey, turn. Yeah, right yeah now. sorry. No, no, no. Hey, no problem. No problem. Okay. If working masses are following right wing leaders, okay, then the essential thing isn't to combat uh, right wing ideology specifically, but it's to pose, pose an alternative that is able to better clarify the position of the working American working people. The more essential reason why they follow right-wing leaders to clarify this distill the essence of this and ultimately that's what marxism and communism is about when one can can succeed in doing this they won't have a reason to support the far right and the right-wing populace they will see communists as a better alternative so well we're not interested primarily in debating the far right although we are open to debating the right and maybe there is some merit in debating right-wingers, but it is superfluous to go after the far right, and it is superfluous to go after right-wingers or some kind of main enemy, and it's a cop-out from the fundamental contradictions that are not only internal to the left, but are internal to the superficial allegiances people have to the left, to the superficial ideologies that define the left. There are internal contradictions with those opportunisms, Uh, that need to be sorted out. Otherwise, we don't even know what our own position is in the first place. To say that we all need to rally against the far right assumes that we both agree and we know what our own position is. I disagree that we know what our position is. The only way we can know our position is by participating in the gladiator arena that will sort out which current and which splinter of the so-called left speaks for the working people of America. And the measure of that is how many people, both from the far right, both from the right, and both from the apolitical crowd, are willing to join in. As far as I'm concerned, there are people who are supporters of infrared who came from right-wing backgrounds, 4chan and poll backgrounds, and we won them over. We succeeded in winning them over without attacking the right. Now, I discussed with Xander Hall the fact that um, you don't actually, uh, you don't actually, you can't do what Vosh and Destiny do, which is gaslight right-wing people about the original alienation that gives rise to their reactionary views and just tell them to accept and submit to the establishment. You have to give a new expression and new form to their anti-establishment sentiment that will allow them to see past the reactionary prejudices and dogmas, uh, and that's my view of what an effective way of uh, countering uh, so-called right-wing populism is. It's the leftists who are repping our name, and it's the leftists, therefore, who are always have always been the enemies of leftists. Now, you identify as a social democrat. That's fine. We at Infrared are Marxist Leninists. Do you know who? And this is a rhetorical question. Don't answer it. But do you know who killed? Who attempted to kill Lenin? The person who attempted to kill Lenin was a self-proclaimed anarchist. 
the ones who were the number one threat to the security and safety of the Soviet Union leading up to the war with the Nazis, they were leftists. It was always been other leftists who've been the enemy of leftists. Who have been the ones who are responsible for the retreat of the left for the past five or six decades? Has it been some objective circumstance that makes it impossible for working people to follow communists and follow leftists? No, it's the result of the opportunism, the sterility, the dogmatism of leftists, the incompetence of leftists. Leftists have always been the enemy of leftists. Leftists have always been the enemy. The fact that rightists and pro-status quo establishment people are enemies is superfluous. We already know they're enemies. They're always going to be enemies. But the decisive enemies have always been leftists. Now onto this business of the necessity of voting for Biden. If it was necessary to vote for Biden, then the amount of Voshites and bread to people who wasted their time going to vote for him must have been decisive in winning the election for him. Now, wouldn't they have been? Now, if they were so decisive in winning the election for Biden, don't you think they could have leveraged their strategic position to actually get Bernie elected in the primary? Couldn't they have told the Democrats, we're the decisive ones who are going to decide decide the general election. Therefore, if we don't get Bernie, we're not going to vote. That way, the Democrats would have to cave in or else risk a Trump presidency, which they may may very well would have. And if they would have done something like that, that would have been easy grounds for splintering off into a new party, for splitting the party in half. They didn't leverage their supposed position. And the reason for that probably is that they have no such decisive position. They wasted their time voting for Biden, even though it didn't make a fucking difference as far as the outcome of the election was concerned. And now we're going to stick that waste of time decision onto them. And we're not going to let them get away with the idea that, well, superficially, Biden was pro-LGBT and Biden was pro-climate change. None of that actually matters. These are superficial completely superficial uh, ideological and political positions that do not reflect the actual material essence of Biden's position. Biden claims to be more willing to address the issue of climate change, that it says nothing about his ability to actually do that in material reality. Biden claims to be more progressive, but does that mean Biden is able to actually be progressive? Those are two entirely different things. There is no relationship to them whatsoever. The only people who can actually affect real change in America are those who are willing to, from top to bottom, sweep the establishment clean, sweep the people who are impediments to the changes that are necessary to empower the working people and the working families of America. Not Joe Biden nor any other Democrat shill stooge is going to be able to affect that. And uh, the, when this excuse that we're going to vote for Biden and then critique him when he's in power is a complete evasion of responsibility. You want your cake and you want to eat it too. You want to vote for Biden and not take the fallout and, the con- and, and take responsibility for what you did. You can't have it both ways. If you want to vote for Biden because you ultimately think this is necessary to stop Trump, you go ahead, but you weigh the positives and negatives and you stick with it. You don't say I'm going to vote for Biden and then ruthlessly critique him. You voted for him. That's like saying you're going to suck his cock and then you're going to slap him in the face, but you sucked his cock, dude. You sucked his cock. And now regarding this slander and these lies about Caleb Maupin, if you're going to accuse Caleb of being a bad faith actor and a grifter and someone who wants money from RT and is just only doing it because they're getting money from RT, then you must accuse Infrared of doing the same thing. We're just as much bad faith actors as Caleb. We're just as much grifters as Caleb. And by the way, you haven't able, you weren't able to prove or persuade anyone that he's a bad faith actor or a grifter. I haven't seen a minimum, a, a smallest amount of evidence to suggest that Caleb is a grifter and a bad faith actor. It seems completely made up by Caleb's enemies. But the idea that you're going to badmouth Caleb and slander him and uh, accuse him of all of these baseless things and then act like infrared are going to be your friends is a joke to me. Dude, we are the same, if not even worse than Caleb. Everything you hate about Caleb, infrared is far worse than Caleb when it comes to that. Caleb is very moderate compared 
to infrared, it seems to me. And I admire him for his moderation. And I'm going to tell you one thing, my friend. If RT offered us a job at infrared and wanted to make infrared a subsidiary of RT, allowing me to do this full time, I would not hesitate for a single moment to work for RT and be and take the money of the Russian government and the Russian state or the Chinese state. I wouldn't hesitate for a single second. So if you're going to call Caleb a grifter and someone whose positions are only being espoused because he's paid off by Russia, which is a curious thing to say, given the fact that Infrared and Caleb share the exact same views, and yet Infrared is not being paid by Russia in any capacity. But if you're going to accuse Caleb Maupin of that, you have to levy that against us. Go ahead. Um, okay, so a few things. Um, first off, the reason that I would accuse that of uh, accused grifting on the part of Caleb Maupin and not on you is that Caleb Maupin is a journalist who works for RT and Press TV, and you are a tiny little podcast with 700 subscribers. Um, next, um, uh, so, um, so that's the reason I, I apply it to him, because he's bigger and he should know better. Um, uh, as far as uh, your other, other points, um, as far as the left posing the greatest threat to the Soviet Union, uh, I mean, it's no doubt that the Soviets fought against other left-leaning groups. The demise of the uh, free territory in Ukraine was largely a result of the Soviet Union's decisions. Um, but I would, mu I would probably say that the threats coming from the reactionary white army and the imperialist powers that supported it and the invasion by the fascist and not just invasion, but attempted genocide by the uh, Nazis was probably a far greater threat to the Soviets than any uh, combination of Trotskyists or anarchists could ever dream of proposing. Um, nextly, on the issue of, um, of voting Biden, um, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't think that voting Biden is something that is going to uh, cause a fundamental change uh, in America. I just think that it's better than Trump. And I do put uh, accountability on uh, myself, knowing the things that Biden will do. Um, I'm not going to pretend like I'm not accountable to that. This is something I actually disagreed about with Bosch in our discussion. I said that uh, if we are to hold Trump voters accountable for the bad things that happen under their watch, it's only fair for us to uh, uh, hold ourselves responsible for the bad things that happen under uh, under our watch. He disagreed, and we discussed that. Um, and... Um, What's the other stuff that you said? Um, and it's not like the only successful movements are necessarily just movements that are entirely revolutionary. All throughout this country's history, we can see things like everything from the women's suffrage movement, which was not necessarily revolutionary, to the uh, labor unions that were calling for better uh, working conditions, to uh, even movements today like the LGBT rights movement and Black Lives Matter. Uh, these aren't movements that are necessarily revolutionary in kind, but they are movements that are calling for reform. And in a lot of and in all of those cases, they got it. And I imagine in BLM's case, they're probably going to get it within the next five or ten years. Um, uh, and it's so it's not like these reformist movements can't do anything uh, remotely positive. Uh, and as far as the idea that. Um, uh, like we're not in a war over ideology, we're in a war for the interests of the working class. Uh, I mean, ideology plays a f factor in what the conditions of the working class are. If you elect a fascist government, the conditions of the working class are going to be worse than the conditions for uh, a socialist or a social democratic uh, government. Um, uh, excuse me. Um, uh, so these things do matter. Um, for the uh, for the vast majority of people, um, is there anything else that I want to say? Uh, uh, nah, I think that's it. You can respond now. Okay. Well, uh, just to go back to this Caleb thing, beginning oh. from in order. Uh, like I said, infrared is growing, and hopefully one day we will be as big as Caleb. So I'm not sure what the size of his channel has to do with it. And second of all, the only reason we're not being paid as journalists by RT is because RT, and we have we uh, we've actually internally uh, discussed that avenue. We don't know how to do it. If we found out how to do it, we would do it in a heartbeat. So you have to hold Caleb and infrared in the same regard, because if infrared could do what Caleb does, we would take that opportunity in a heartbeat. 
Um, it's simple, simple as that. You would see us being paid uh, by Russia and we would be saying the same things that we're saying now. So this slander against Caleb, again, is baseless. You fail to demonstrate anything remotely, uh, remotely close uh, to a substantiation of the allegation that he's a bad faith actor who doesn't believe anything he says or is just doing it for money and he's a grifter. You haven't substantiated that because infrared is just the same. And yet you don't hold us to the same standard as you do to him. And you said the reason is because of our size. Why don't you come back in a few months or a year and we'll see... Uh, if you'll be saying the same thing now uh, regarding this stuff about the internal f uh, the f uh, no 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 I didn't interrupt you even though I wanted to to be honest I really wanted to I didn't interrupt you so you are gonna okay. let me talk regarding this right. stuff about the Russian Civil War and World War II yes it's true that at, in the heat of battle in the time of the Russian Civil War the white army the allies were the biggest threat and then during World War II obviously the Germans, the Nazis, were the biggest threat. We all know that. It's a given. But what were the conditions that enabled the possibility for the Soviet Union to confront and face those bigger threats? First and foremost, they had to get in order with the other leftists. The only reason the, so the Red Army was able to repel and defeat the Allies in the White Army is because of the work that the Bolsheviks did through the entire duration of their existence to distinguish themselves and point out the opportunism and falsehood of the other so-called Marxists and so-called uh, leftists that were operating within Russia. So you're putting the cart before the horse. The enemies are always leftists, not because at any given time the true enemy is going to be other leftists from a tactical or strategic view in war, but because in order to prepare and even stand a chance in those types of wars, you have to defeat, destroy, and crush these other leftists and make sure you're distinct from them. Just as much, the Soviet Red Army would have not stood a chance against the invading Nazi, uh, Nazi forces and aggressors had the Soviet Union not gone through its great purges and purged the leftists, the ultra-leftist elements who were so ultra-leftist they were collaborating with fascist and imperialistic powers in order to overthrow the Soviet Union and institute their true uh, permanent uh, revolution and whatever nonsense uh, of that nature. Now, regarding this stuff about Biden being better than Trump, I call your bluff that Biden is better than Trump. I have yet to see a single example of how it could be said Biden is better than Trump beyond superficial bullshit that in no way actually matters in reality, but even if I grant you the fact that Biden is uh, in actuality somehow better than Trump, we don't view this uh, better or worse from a holistic uh, perspective. Is who For whom is he better? Is he better for the forces of uh, communism or the forces of socialism and the for progressive forces in the United States who are trying to affect real change in this country? No, he's clearly not better for those forces. In fact, he's much, much worse for a multitude of reasons. One of them is that he shifted the very basis of the Democratic Party's supporters away from the once working class masses and to the white suburbs uh, who were decisive for Biden's victory in the first place. Now, given the class elements who now define the base of the Democratic Party, it's quite clear that Biden is a disaster for the left. And the question of whether Trump is better for the left is an open question. I would argue that Trump was better for the left. And maybe you're going to see just how true this fact is in the years to come. The idea that Vosh and BreadTube are finally going to have their day now that Biden's elected is the biggest joke I've ever heard. You're going to witness the complete decimation of the American left in the years to come. And you can come back and hold me to that. I promise you that much. Now, regarding this stuff about not all movements being entirely revolutionary, it's a curious thing to say because I didn't mention anything about movements being revolutionary or not. I didn't say a single thing about revolution, actually. But it's curious you're going to mention the abjectly racist women's suffrage movement. Um, I'm not sure why that is relevant. I'm not sure why you're mentioning unions or cultural struggles like the LGBT. What is so relevant about that? Those are th phenomena in reality which, can e which uh, are in ambiguous from a class perspective. Either proletarian or bourgeois elements will preponderate in the expression and uh, in, uh, in the hegemony over these movements. Moreover, I don't even consider these movements 
uh, uh, holistic in the first place, even to gain hegemony over in the first place. I don't see what the significance of this point you're bringing up whatsoever. But I did find it a little bit interesting of how you said that in five years, Black Lives Matter is going to affect its goals. But you haven't asked the question, you haven't um, pondered upon the question of whether Black Lives Matter actually successfully represents the interests of America's black population. Well, in fact, what in actuality is Black Lives Matter's goals actually amounting to in reality? Is it amounting to some kind of land reform? Is it amounting to some kind of true reparations and uh, for, uh, the 40 acres and a mule that was promised to the freed and emancipated uh, black peoples after the Civil War? No such thing is going to happen. Instead, what you're going to happen is you're going to have new shows on Netflix and uh, Amazon and uh, Hulu Plus and on Disney and all these, you know, on the internet and on Twitch and on YouTube, giving lip service to Black Lives Matter and the, uh, the struggle for cultural racial equality, while doing nothing in actual reality for the black communities and the black people on the ground. We've seen this story play out over and over again, and the establishment forces have so successfully been able to divorce the cultural lip service superficial bullshit from actual tangible changes uh, for the black masses. That to the shock and surprise of these naive uh, leftists, uh, there are many black masses who are turning away from the Democratic Party and from leftists in general, seeing past the lies and the trickery and the, the con game that the Democrats have been playing with them. And, that, and they're no longer able to take them for granted. That's why an unprecedented proportion of people were voting for Trump in the last election. Now, regarding this business about ideology playing a factor, um, I actually don't think ideology plays a factor in the way you're trying to describe it. Ideology plays a factor on YouTube. Ideology plays a factor from an ideological perspective. Yes, when you're an ideologist as an individual, then ideology does play a factor. But insofar as it is relating to the masses, insofar as it is relating to masses, ideology is not what is decisive whatsoever. People can switch and flip from being Trump supporters, hold me to this, to communists quite easily. It's just that communists have to formulate the interests of the working masses who were Trump supporters and QAnon supporters in a more effective way than uh, the right-wing ideologists have been doing. And if they can do that, I guarantee you those people will flock over to uh, forces and ideologies that on a superficial level of the political spectrum are diametrically opposed to the ones uh, they currently uh, are under. That's because the political spectrum isn't dialectical. It abstractly represents political differences and ideological differences, but does not relate to or regard the actual essential reason for those differences, which is why you have paradoxes and ironies like the so-called horseshoe paradox. You have these so-called paradoxes because the political spectrum, which you're referring to, that defines, uh, that is supposedly the essence of political difference, uh, is actually estranged from its true and real uh, material essence. It can appear that right-wing and left-wing overlap and are indistinguishable oftentimes, especially when we're talking about ambiguous anti-establishment sentiment, such as Occupy Wall Street. The whole anti-establishment Occupy Wall Street sentiment could easily be manifested in terms of anti-Semitism. It could also be manifested in terms of something else. Uh, that's why socialists in the past, actually, onto this topic of anti-Semitism, since infrared is strangely accused of this, uh, people like August Bebel called anti-Semitism the socialism of fools for this reason. And actually, that's always what authentic socialists have regarded reactionary rightists as. Foolish socialists and failed socialists. We don't see them as existential enemies. We see them as failed socialists, and our goal is to be successful socialists. Go ahead. Okay. So you said uh, a number of things that I very much do not agree with. So let's go over them one by one. Um, first off, the idea that Trump is better for the American left than Biden is ludicrous for a number of reasons um for one this is the most important thing to me he's worse just on like a a basic level uh 
Tr uh, Trump winning means more people dying from COVID. It means uh, less time is available to prevent the climate apocalypse. It means that more people are going to be thrown off of health care. We might see an entire Obamacare appeal. It means it's more likely that we're going to see a full-blown conflict with Iran. It means that more people are going to die in Yemen. It means more people are going to get deported and sent to concentration camps. Um, and there's going to be more family separations. Um, it um, Just on a number of things. But even if you were to take the hyper-accelerationist like literally screw all minorities, all poor and working people and the planet and just kick it down the road because hopefully Trump will make things bad enough that we're going to like then elect a socialist. For one, I don't even know if we're going to be able to have elections after a second Trump term. I really do think he is that dangerous and that anti-democratic. If they Sorry, your mic cut off. Your mic cut if, off. Sorry. If the shit that happened Oh, you might just cut really? you off. Um, can you hear me? Speak. Uh, I'm speaking. Okay, go ahead. Um, if the shit that happened in the last few months of his presidency after he lost was any indication. Uh, and secondly, uh, generally speaking, it seems as if when someone like Trump falls, uh, people are um, people really aren't willing to look for like radical uh solutions they're looking for just someone who isn't trump like bernie sanders for example was more successful in 2016 running against hillary clinton after eight years of obama than he was in 2020 because i mean in 2020 there was the electability argument the fact that well god we just want trump out we're willing to nominate anyone just as long as we think that they can beat trump and like uh, you know, Bernie, we think he's too radical. Now, obviously, there are going to be people who are going to say that regardless because they're establishment shills. But um, that argument is more the case when you have when there's more stakes on to beat someone like Donald fucking Trump um, than it is when that choice is up in the air, as it was during the time of the Democratic Party. Um, and uh, secondly, um, I guess, um, I mean, as far as the idea that if uh, Caleb Maupin's a grifter, then you guys are grifters. Uh, well, the reason I don't call you guys necessarily grifters yet is because you guys don't have Russian and Iranian money uh, peddling in on your channel. But I assure you that once you do, and I imagine at one point you will, uh, then I will say that you are grifters. And I also think that Caleb Maupin is a grifter regardless, because there's no way he could say the kind of stuff that he says um, – about uh, China, about Putin, about like socialist billionaires. Um, like this isn't like any real ideological consistency um, in my view. It's the fact that he's paid by um, by Russian and Iranian state actors who want them to def to want him to defend their allies and their interests and he'll do so no matter how many ridiculous leaps in logic he has to take in order for that to happen. Um as far as some other stuff, um, the idea that like uh, ideology doesn't play uh, a role in that. I mean, I definitely do agree. There are a lot of Trump supporters that can be moved over into being communist. There's if you talk to a lot of um, people on the right, there is this sort of populist tendency and there is this anti-establishment further. They're just being misdirected. And I believe if they are redirected, uh, they could very easily be um uh, supporters of uh, they could e easily be like Bernie supporters, for example, or something perhaps even something more uh, like um, DSA types or even just full on uh, communists or whatever. Obviously, you and I have different ideas of whether of where um, the United States should go, but we both want the United States to be uh, much more left leaning than it is at the moment. As far as like where what are like fundamental ways that Biden is better than Trump? Um, just in practice, not just in terms of what he says. Well, I can give you quite a few examples. Biden has said that he's going to cut Saudi funding in Yemen. Trump was a massive Saudi shill who was basically bribed off by them and giving them more weapons so they can commit, continue committing a genocide. Uh, Biden is repealing the Keystone XL Access Pipeline. Trump would not have done that. Biden overturned the travel ban and the ban on transgender... Uh, gender uh, militaries uh, and the ban on the tr transgender people serving in the military, as well as DACA. Uh, and uh, God, what's some of the other stuff? Uh, he's uh, started contracts to end private prisons. Again, wouldn't have happened under Trump. And he's pushing for um, uh, what it seems like is a much more serious vaccine rollout. And um, 
Uh, and admittedly, I do think that the aid package was a little bit uh, less um, – uh, less than what Trump would have promised. So I guess that's one way where he's worse. But still, that's, I think, either four or five pretty, that's five major issues where he's significantly better than Trump on a number of things. Uh, oh, and the Paris Climate Accords, can't forget about that, um, as well as probably a bunch of other stuff. And again, we haven't even, um, we haven't even seen the full uh, extent of it. Now, I don't think that the next four years will be anything amazing. It won't be anything close to necessarily what I want, but it'll be much better than what Trump will provide. That I don't think that that's just to me common sense. And I know there are probably a lot of people in your chat right now who's saying that I'm a bootlicker and that I'm a uh, simp for the Democratic establishment. But let it be known that I am not. I am simply a rational human being who does what all rational human beings do in this kind of situation, uh, which is say that Biden is less bad than Trump. Uh, to me, this is almost this is basically inarguable. Um, so, uh, and then the final point, the final point about um, uh, Black Lives Matter and how they supposedly don't represent the interests of African Americans. That's funny, given the fact that, like, what is it, 80 to 90 percent of African Americans are supportive of Black Lives Matter. Uh, but even ignoring that, I would say that it is in the interest of black people to not be randomly murdered on the street by police officers. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm, uh, I'm generally in favor of that not happening. Um, I'm not a, not one of those uh, he was no angel types if you catch my drift. Um, and um, and also I think that if I were um, and, and not just if I were I, I support this anyway um, I also think that it is definitely in the interest of uh, African Americans to pursue things like uh, uh, a major criminal justice reform uh, ending the drug war uh, and I believe BLM Many people in BLM actually have argued for reparations, and it's possible that we may see probably not full-blown reparations, but at least something approaching that under Biden, which we definitely would not have seen under Trump. So there, that's my argument. Okay, well, there's a few things. I want to tackle your argument. I used to do it in order, um, but I'm going to combine some because your second argument about um, the... Uh, the the fact that it's ludicrous Trump is better for the American left you went in, into a tangent about the fact that he's better from a holistic perspective you also uh, you, your five examples that you would use later down on the line was the same so I'm just going to combine all of that so we can get that out of the way and then we can address the other all stuff. right okay so the first thing you said is that it's ludicrous to think that Trump is better for the American left I beg to disagree even though there's no way we can necessarily prove it from a logical perspective you could easily argue that Trump is maybe better for the American left if only for the reason that he was able to shock the Democratic Party so profoundly and change the political game so profoundly uh, that the establishment is revealed as the emperor, uh, the emperor, uh, what is it called? The emperor isn't wearing any clothes. The establishment was exposed. Its weakness and vulnerability was exposed. The fact that leftists fail to capitulate uh, upon the lesson of Trump's victory is the result of their own incompetence and the result of the forces of opportunism and the, uh, the, the class forces that preponderate the left, the professional managerials. A real left would have easily been able to see from the Trump momentum, see from this sea of chaos, the ability uh, to actually build an alternative to this wretched American deep state and establishment which has been trudging along for almost the entirety of uh, the past three or four uh, decades is completely un invincible and unchallengeable. Trump changed that for better or for worse. Trump made it so that the mainstream media was no longer trusted in the same way as it was before. Trump made it so that the establishment was no longer seen as invincible as it was before. The time for political alternatives uh, was opened up by Trump. And I would reckon the only reason we have such a plethora of so-called radical leftists, at least compared to before Trump was elected, was for no other reason than the fact that Trump was elected. Trump is the reason why BreadTube exists in the proportion or the level of popularity that it does. Now, you may contest that point, and I'll contest it right back. We won't agree. If you don't see it, you don't see it. But that's my fundamental view, and it's the view shared by many others. Now, you de-emphasize that point to go into this whole holistic view of society as to 
who is ultimately better, Trump or Biden. Uh, and uh, I completely reject this framing of uh, harm reduction for no other reason that you are neglecting the part about where you as a subject are actually decisive for the conditions and circumstances you are claiming are better in the first place. Okay? You can say, even if we were make the argument that less people are going to die under Biden, um, this doesn't excuse you using what little energy and ability you have to voting for Biden. Because it's there's not a one-to-one -one direct relationship between what you think society should be and the people uh, you go and vote for. Now, I know in American democracy, that's an incredibly shocking thing uh, to say, but there isn't a one-to-one uh, -one relationship. Because where does the threshold end and where does it begin? What do I mean by this? Uh, you, if you are going to take holistic responsibility for all of the deaths, that the lesser deaths that occur under Biden, you must also take responsibility for all the excess deaths that occur under Biden uh, as compared to in the grand scheme of things, the ultimate grand scheme of things, as compared to uh, you spending your time and energy devoted to creating a true uh, political alternative to the Democrats. Now, you are just restricting the scale of time to four years. I find that completely arbitrary. What if the reason more people, more, what if more people die than they otherwise would have from a scale of 50 years? Uh, it, since you spent all your time and resources voting for Biden rather than building a political alternative, which in 50 years in the grand scheme of things would ultimately be able to um, overthrow the Democratic Party or do something interesting. Moreover, I completely reject the humanitarian view of harm reduction as the linchpin of politics at all. Politics is an ugly business. Politics is not charity. There is no direct relationship between individual morality and politics. Politics is a sphere of war. It's a sphere of struggle and has nothing to do with preventing more deaths than otherwise. Did more people die than they otherwise would have under communist states? Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. But in the grand scheme of things, this is actually not what's decisive in defining the political class struggle. You say you mention um, accelerationism, which is... Uh, is a phrase that's extremely misunderstood and you're saying screw you said if we're accelerationists we're saying screw minorities and working people well we're only screwing minorities and working people if our actions are decisive in the outcome faced by them if our actions were decisive in the outcome faced by minorities and working people we would not be faced with the paradox of having to vote for biden or trump in the first place this is what my argument was before and what i was trying to get at our decisions are not actually what is decisive if they are we wouldn't need biden as our only alternative this is a paradox i've never seen anyone even remotely attempt to worm their way out of because no one can worm their way out of this basic point uh, that's why the whole harm reduction argument is completely meaningless you assume that you have power that you don't have you don't have the power to make a difference so you don't have the power to make excuses for not building the ability for you to stand on your own independent two feet as a alt political alternative by building a new people's party or a new political alternative. Now, um, uh, you can say that in the long uh, that Biden is going to prevent le even even if we accept the four years time scale. Uh, how is it? How can you be certain that Biden is ultimately going to lead to less deaths than under Trump? Well, Trump isn't president uh, in these four years, so we have no way of actually knowing that. I completely disagree that the COVID deaths in America are the result of Trump being in power. America as a civilization is not equipped, it's not capable of dealing with something like coronavirus for a complex multitude of reasons. We're a very individualistic society. It doesn't actually matter how many, it's a paradox. You have Democrats who want lockdowns, but unlike Asian societies, who are more uh, collectivistic societies, when we institute lockdown in America, we don't help people. We throw them out on the street. We close people's small businesses, and we uh, cut. Uh, we uh, we have people lose their jobs, and uh, we don't support them. We leave them on their own. That's the issue in America. Whether you are against lockdown or pro lockdown leads ultimately to the same outcome of suffering for the American people. It's a paradox that has nothing to do with Trump being in power or not being in power. There's no one more than Trump who wanted 
to uh, get rid of this coronavirus problem, which was an impediment to his prized and prided stock market growth. Now, Biden may be less likely to engage in conflict with Iran, but he's much more likely to engage in conflict with Syria and Russia and other countries. Not sure what is so... And, and also the acceleration of America's imperial aggression against Iran and China. I don't even know if that's going to really be ultimately softened under Biden. Maybe the Democrats want to play a different approach rather than direct head first into conflict with Iran. But conflict to me of some kind seems inevitable. Uh, but even if we neglect the, the, this thing about Iran, Biden wants war, wants to uh, engage more, more aggression against Russia and more aggression against countries like Syria. So we've swapped and Korea. So we've swapped out Iran for Korea, Syria and Russia. I don't see what such an a um, such a uh, accomplishment about this. Uh, the thing about Saudi Arabia and the arm shipments to Saudi Arabia, well, it seems like the damage has been done. All of this is not about harm reduction. It's about political chess games. Bin Salman is more allied with, uh, with uh, Russia now. And uh, that's the reason why the Democrats are against the current establishment in Saudi Arabia. But if it wasn't Bin Salman who was in power in Saudi Arabia, but the old status quo, the Democrats would have no issue in supporting them. Regarding the stuff about concentration caps, what a complaint completely baseless thing to say, given that there are still kids in cages even to this day, and that Biden has walked back his promises to end uh, the rigorous uh, deportation and anti-immigrant programs initiated under Trump. And there's direct evidence for that. You can look it up. There's no indication whatsoever Biden's walking those back. You mentioned DACA and other things, which is all well and good for the educated classes of the United States. Doesn't say anything about the immigrants who are coming here desperately uh, and with nothing on their back, crossing the border, and this uh, immigration crisis. So that's two completely uh, different things. Regarding the whole business about climate change, I actually don't care whether Biden accepts the Paris Accord. And there is nothing these people can do about climate change. The more they can't, there's no. It's a point of no return. They can try to soften it as much as they want, but ultimately, the people who are going to be decisive for climate change are the people. And Biden is not going to convince the overwhelming majority of the people who distrust the establishment and who distrust uh, the, the Bill Gateses and the Davoses and the Great Reset type people. They are fundamentally conspiratorial minded, fundamentally distrust these people, and they're not going to get with the program. So there's going to be a lot of resistance to that. And that's the main issue, actually. The main issue isn't who's willing to implement the, mo the best policies, policies from above and abstractly. The main issue is the people who are the impediment to the changes that the uh, climate scientists find necessary to stop the climate disaster. Although I myself am personally skeptical that there's anything they can even do to stop the changes that are inevitably going to come. I think the only thing that can be done is to adjust to them. And I think countries like China are the best equipped to adjust to them. Now, this whole fear-mongering about the possibility of a Trump uh, dictatorship, I simply don't buy it. I don't buy that the Capitol Hill... Uh, storming was anything other than a skeptical. A lot of liberals got their pennies in a bunch. It doesn't impress me as much as it impressed them. I saw it for the spectacle and the farce that it was. I have no evidence, see no evidence whatsoever that Trump was going to prevent uh, elections happening after four years. This seems like a fairy tale invented by the hysterical liberals and the Democratic Party. It doesn't scare me in the same way it scared them. And I'm an Arab Muslim, moreover from a Shia background, therefore associated with Iran, who Trump is against. And I'm saying that, that I wasn't scared of it and I wasn't impressed by it, if we want to play that game. Now, uh, regarding this thing about the pragmatic approach that Trump should be gotten rid of so uh, the Democrats can stop using him as an excuse uh, uh, for uh, the fact of, uh, that we just need to get rid of Trump, well, it goes back to, the, it goes back to this issue of, um, it goes back to the same exact issue of, why are you focused on what these establishment Democrats are thinking in the first place? It doesn't matter what they think because they don't represent the majority of the American people. Like I said... The goal isn't to convince them who's the most viable. Obviously, Bernie Sanders is never going to be viable toward those people. Bernie Sanders will only ever be viable to the same anti-establishment forces that Trump attempted to monopolize. Now, Trump failed on, a, on many of his promises 
to help working Americans and working families. And Bernie should have intervened there, but he did it. He shilled for the Democratic establishment. And I don't see this whole thing about, well, let's get rid of Trump so they can stop using him as an excuse. Well, just who is using Trump as an excuse? Is it the American people or is it the establishment and the elites uh, who are nowhere near decisive for the victory of progressive, socialistic and communistic forces? Um, regarding this business about Caleb Maupin and the fact that when we have money, you're going to call us grifters too. Well, you said there's no way he could have said he, there's no way he could say what he's saying if he wasn't being paid. But believe it or not, um, believe it or not, we say the same thing. We say the same thing, and we aren't getting paid. And but you don't know if we're getting paid or not. So you should logically deduce that we are getting paid because we say the same things Caleb says. If you can't see the consistency in that and the only logical conclusion is that he's being paid off by Russia, Iran and others, you have to imply you have to apply the same thing to us. You understand because we're saying the same thing. So you have to accuse us of that uh, according to you. Now uh, regarding all of the, uh, I got already got to those uh, examples, the DACA, the transgender military ban. I fought, found that one to be an interesting point you brought up. I'm not sure why I should be impressed at the fact that Biden is making it easier for people to spill the blood of uh, of uh, Middle Eastern uh, children uh, just because they're transgender. Not sure what's so impressive. Uh, about that regarding this whole business of serious vaccine rollout there's nobody who wanted serious vaccine rollout more than trump himself actually biden's victory even though i'm not a harm reductionist and a pragmatist the fact that biden won is probably going to accelerate people's paranoia and anti-vaccine views and make it more difficult for the vaccines to roll out where if, if trump was in power and telling these people to take vaccines he might have a better job who knows but it's a it's completely beyond the point because it doesn't matter anyway because the whole harm reduction argument is fundamentally flawed and completely farcical uh but um regarding vaccines as an aside i don't really trust the pfizer mrna vaccines i just fucking don't i would only i personally uh, would prefer to take a traditional vaccine these mrna vaccines are being rolled out never been uh never been uh they have no um let's say they have no precedent in history they're completely brand new and we're being the test subjects of these uh, new mrna vaccines i personally want nothing to do with them uh regarding this stuff we mentioned the age package so we don't have to get into that whole business about how the democrats wanted to give less money to the american people than trump was uh on the eve of uh his uh, his leaving office uh regarding the whole thing about a rational human being uh would see that biden is better than uh, trump well then count me irrational because i don't see it uh regarding black lives matter well you mistook what i said you of course the majority of black people think black lives matter and uh, it's curious, though, that only 80 to, 80 to 90 percent of them support Black Lives Matter. And that's because Black Lives Matter is also a brand. It's not just about having discontent with police killings. It's also a brand, a very specific brand that many black people that I've encountered, that I've spoken to, feels like doesn't actually address the concrete interests and concerns of America's black population, but is using black people to vote as a vehicle for the Democrats. That's what I've seen. Uh, that's what I've seen. And uh, regarding this whole thing about the possibility of reparations under Biden, or them at least being more possible than under Trump, well, that's just the thing, is that uh, if you want to play games about what is, at, uh, what is at least more possible or what is less possible or what is more harmful, what is not more harmful, it goes back to that original argument I made. You are assuming a God's eye view of society where you can, from a utilitarian or whatever perspective, decide what is ultimately going to be the better outcome and, uh, and, um, and uh, uh, adjust your actions accordingly. I completely reject this view of how individuals relate to society um the only thing this is going to do is make you feel better you feel good doesn't say anything about your actual material relationship to society and the extent of your ability to affect any type of uh change in it it just tells me something about your desire to feel morally consistent and feel like you're reducing harm when in actuality you're doing nothing of that 
sort. And like I said, if we were gods who could decide, well, Biden is ultimately better than Trump, we wouldn't need to make that choice in the first place. We could just have communism immediately or something. I think that's all. Unless I missed something. Go ahead. Okay. Ugh, you said a lot of shit. So, a few things. Um, first off, the reason that I would call uh, someone like Caleb Mopin a grifter, and I wouldn't call you grifters, is uh, really so simple that uh, it can pretty much be summed up in a few words. Uh, Caleb, for as much as he's a disgusting, uh, weaselly little grifter, is genuinely intelligent. And you are very stupid. So anyway, what did you just uh, say to me? Moving forward, what, what did you um, say to me, little bitch? I've been so fucking polite to you, despite you being such a little stupid fuck, that now you want to call me stupid? Don't fucking test my patience. If you want to have a war of words, I will destroy you, little boy. You came on my fucking show, and now you want to call me names and talk shit to me and call me stupid, you little bitch. Don't come on my fucking show. And, and, and take advantage of my generosity to insult me. And I'm going to give you a choice. Apologize to Caleb right now or it's going to get ugly. And apologize to me too or it's going to get ugly. Your choice. No, fuck off. Okay, you little bitch. Then let's have it. Let's go at it, you little stupid pussy. You sound like the biggest pussy that's ever come on my fucking show so far. You little fucking nerd twerp. I don't care that you're fucking 17. Who the fuck are you to come on infrared? All Every single point you've made has been so fucking stupid. You haven't addressed a single fucking thing I've been saying. This whole thing has been going on for so fucking long. For so fucking long. And you've been wasting my time at it. Well, 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 you've been dilly-dallying around the fun fundamental fucking points i've been bringing up do you feel smart little boy you feel smart does it make you feel smart yeah, as a matter of fact i do because I'm you with do feel smart movie. but you sound like a little pussy and a dumb fuck who watches bread tube and thinks they're smart for it doesn't impress me kid you haven't impressed me kid when i was 17 you know what i was doing i knew about hegel when i was 17 i was smart when i was 17 you little boy when i was 17 years old i knew i was reading all sorts of fucking shit you little dumbass little kid you don't impress me for 17 dude like you honestly need help oh okay like, i need help i need help i need help then anything yeah, else you're a, you're a fucking insane person who's running a fucking cult yes i am insane that's that's where you got me right i am insane i'm not gonna stand for your insults i'm barely able to stand your insults against caleb and your lies and slanders against him but i've been tolerating it this much so far because you haven't been calling anybody names i've been so patient with you i've been so fucking patient with you and you're gonna call me stupid how fucking patient have I been with you, kid? I've been sitting here dealing with every fucking stupid thing you've been throwing at me, thinking about it uh, within the short time span I'm able to, as deeply as I can, to give you an appropriate response, and you call me stupid? I'm the one letting you on my fucking show. So if I'm stupid, what are you doing? Did you think you were going to expose me? Because you failed on that account, little boy. Everyone can see you're a dumbass little fucking kid. And you're not impressive. You're not impressive for 17. You're not impressive for 17. I mean, frankly, you're really fighting my battles for me at this point. Go ahead. Good. I'm glad I'm fighting your battles. Let me fight those battles, okay, good. you little bitch. We for those, don't we? You little <laughs> bitch. You're going to call me stupid? Who the fuck are you? I let you on my show. I'm giving you. I'm giving you the opportunity. I have more subs than you. And I gave you this opportunity. I didn't need you. You're not helping me. You had the audacity to say that you're you're up there with Vosh and Xanderhal. You're the third bread tuber I'm dealing with. You're not shit. You have less than 500 subs. I don't need you. You're not one of them. You're not boosting my views. You're not boosting my my my, my exposure. I'm helping you your biggest video so i mean i guess by the way my voice dominates yours for the stream they can't hear you when you talk over me you little fuck if not for the fact that you have a little cuck voice huh. that's, yeah that's funny i i don't care what you think you don't I, care I have, I anything don't. else you little yeah, pussy I really, don't. I really don't you you your your words have no you're gonna cry tonight you're, when the stream is over when and stream's yeah. over you're gonna go to bed crying and you should cry you should feel bad like ranting and raving, I can actually go through why all your points are fucking You stupid. can't. You or can't. Like, you can't, though. You can't, though. Okay, go ahead, and I'm going to interrupt you, and I'm going to be rude as fuck, and I'm going to demolish you every bit of the way. You want to play this game? Okay. Let's do it. Sure. Let's do it. Go ahead. Go. Now I'm not going to be polite anymore. 
All right, sure. Let's fucking do this. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. What was the first point? Um, okay, so you were talking about like how um, uh, Biden's. No, go walk back to Caleb Biden. point about how you said Caleb couldn't say anything he's saying unless he was paid out. We say the same thing, and we're not paid out. And your your answer to that is that we're stupid. Is that all you have? Is that all you got on that point? No, it's not just that you're stupid. It's that I. Prove I'm stupid, you little dumb bitch. Who the fuck? Respect your fucking elders. You need to be slapped around a little bit, you dumbass little boy. Respect your fucking elders. Respect your fucking elders. When I was 17, I was way smarter and knowledgeable than you are. No, I won't respect you because you're a total asshole. I'm yeah, but you that. respect me when I slap your little dumbass face around a little bit, huh? You came here in our show and called him stupid. And you're calling him an asshole now? Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? I'm someone who is more dignified and a better content creator than you are. Okay, then good luck with that. See if you rise faster than infrared and bet and you surpass us. I want to put your fucking money where your mouth is in proving that. I looked at your channel. Your thumbnails are dog shit. They look like vomit. Your thumbnails look like vomit. They look ugly. Your channel's ugly. I mean, you're, if we're insulting thumbnails now, your thumbnail looks like a, are beautiful. Looks like the, uh, the art shot, the uh, art project of a five year old who was uh, okay. Um, but my thumbnails are beautiful. Painful. My thumbnails are beautiful. Everyone sees they're beautiful. You keep telling yourself that, man. I mean, this isn't really about arguments anymore. Now we're just talking. Okay, shit, but go really through the points you want to make, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll see, we'll see. Go through the points you want to make. Let's go. All right, let's, let's go through the fucking points. Um, okay. So as far as like for example the trans military ban, yeah. I agree. Fuck the U.S. military, it's fucking terrible. But, but you I used it as an example of why Biden's better than I Trump. Rather it, I'd rather have it that um, everyone has access to the U.S. military, so we can all equally shed each other's blood. It's but actually, important. actually, it's not what's gonna. So we can all shed each other's blood equally. What the fuck is wrong with you? You know whose blood is being shelt, shelt, spe You know whose blood is being spilt. It's not primarily the soldiers. It's innocents overseas. You little pussy. What the fuck are you talking about? Um, I mean, I'd rather have it so that like everyone's able to slaughter people on equal footing than rather have the. Uh, oh, you would. Be, you uh, would. Tough guy you are. You're such a tough guy. You want to slaughter people on equal footing. What a tough little guy you are to want to slaughter other people overseas. What a tough guy you are. Overseas, I think that it's bad that people would. Oh, you think it's bad? You think it's bad? You think it's bad? Oh, good for you. You think it's bad? But I would prefer everyone does it on an equal footing. I'm a consequentialist. Oh, it's bad, but at least you know you're like such a fucking. You want to? You literally have the mentality of a cocksucker. You have the fucking mentality of somebody who says, "Well, well, I have to play with Biden's balls a little bit, but you know what? It's just a little bit." You have no dignity, no dignity, no human dignity, no human dignity. No human dignity. Uh, I, I, you can keep saying that, but that doesn't make it true. Cook-like mentality. Oh, he's just gonna <laughs> fuck my wife a little bit. Oh, wow. He's just gonna so, fuck my wife a little bit. Just mm -hmm. a little bit. Shut the fuck up, you cuck. Uh, no, uh, no, fuck you. Um, so anyway, um, more points. And I fucked um, that point, by the way. Go ahead. Uh... Destroyed your point. You want to respond to how I destroyed it, or you want right, to keep um, listing them off? Yeah, so, no, you didn't. You just yeah, I did destroy it. I destroyed your point. Like your point was fucking are. stupid. Um, your phone so, was fucking, mean, fucking like, stupid. I, so you want to shed like, blood equally? What a stupid point. Go on. Uh, no, I, I said I would rather have it so that like um I would rather have a scenario where um. And who the no, fuck are you to have that, you tough guy? Who are you to have that? Who are you to have that scenario, tough guy? Are you God? You're going to be slaughtering all these people because you'd rather have it? You'd prefer it? Oh, I'd prefer, I'd prefer the people getting slaughtered by means entirely outside of my control. I would sleep better at night. And would you sleep better at night? Is that what you tell yourself to sleep better at night? Yeah, I mean, it, eh, it works, you know? Dumbass uh, kid. Mean, uh, you dumbass I mean, uh, fucking like, kid. Okay, can I... Okay, you haven't even remotely... Okay, get it, get it, get it. Okay, get it. You weren't bullied enough military. in school is your problem. The, the, the fact that the American military does fucked up things is irrelevant to the fact that everyone should be... Every American should be allowed to serve in the military. What's so irrelevant? Of what What's so irrelevant about that? True. What's so irrelevant? No, well, it, it, is, re it is relevant. Why? Like, when there's a trans military ban, that means that trans people who are... Um, 
uh, you know, who are employed by the military will be kicked out and they'll lose their livelihoods. They'll lose their jobs. They'll have to find other Boo jobs. fucking who? Boo fucking who? Boo fucking who? Boo fucking who? It's a tough world. It's a tough world. You are you are redefining the parameters. It's a tough world. Kids are fucking being droned and bombed. Kids are starving and dying all over the fucking world. Your threshold for what you tolerate in this world is so fucking arbitrary. Oh, you know, you... um. You grew up in the projects and you're uh, economically suffering. Well, it's a tough world for you, folks. No, you're changing the threshold. I'm a communist, you dumb cocksucker. I'm a communist, so I'm not saying what you're saying. I'm a communist. I'm not shilling for Biden. So, well, we can just take it as it is. I'm not shilling for Biden. I'm a communist, so it doesn't apply to me. Don't get it twisted. Uh, I have no idea how that's relevant to anything. I it is said. fucking relevant. You're the one saying, oh, I would prefer this. I would prefer no. that. As a communist, I don't prefer no, this I, or that. I seek... Why am I even doing this? Okay. Why I'm are you doing it? You look dumb as bit, fuck. Is... Like, okay, can I... I mean... Okay, God. We, we kept going for point after point. What's the next point? Um, okay. So, um... <sighs> God. So the idea is that like um that like well we have to keep in mind like um you know we have to do keep in mind that like what like harm reduction like what is Biden going to do he might spit do it out harm spit it out I'm a, I'm on so many limited time spit it out kid Okay, uh, fine. I was just about to get to it. Um so if Trump is president there is a very legitimate possibility that we might not all be here in 50 what years. What does that have to do with what is within the sphere of your own practical intervention as an individual subject, you fucking idiot? That was my point. I didn't make hypothetical scenarios from a holistic point of view. And you're going to fear monger about extinction, you cock? I don't buy it. You're going to fear monger about extinction? If we're going to go under extinct under Trump, it's going to happen under Biden too. But I don't think we're going to go fucking extinct, you dumb little cock. You, you, you're buying the Democratic Party line and you're under Biden and under threat of extinction that's what you're trying to sell the american people vote for us or you're all gonna die see how that works out for you see how that works out for you kid in your political future you're gonna fall flat on your dumb ass face is what i can promise you call me stupid come on my fucking show instead of thanking me that i'm giving you this opportunity see this chat doesn't matter how respectful we are they are always gonna disrespect us no matter what we do. No, but they don't know what they have coming for them when they disrespect me. They don't know what they have coming for them. Calling me names. No. And I'm being so been. patient with this kid. So fucking patient. And the pussy left. This little pussy left. There you have it. There you have it. He deserves to be bullied. There you have it, chat. He left. Surrendered. And he's crying. He's crying right now. Good cry. Good cry. You learn to respect people when you talk to them, even if you're not face to face with them. You respect the people you're talking to. And you don't shit on people like Caleb, who worked, it seems like he's done a lot of work for America's working families. And he's done a lot of real work. He's, 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 do, he's, he's been through so much. He's an experienced guy. You think twice before you talk shit about people like this. You're gonna, I'm going to make you guys start putting respect on these people's name. Even if I have to look crazy in the process of doing it. Because I'm fucking sick of seeing it. I'm sick of seeing how they disrespect him.